Hi folks, this is Karim Raouf from IT Visualizer channel. Today we will begin a new series of videos. Uh, we will call this series of videos the Matrix Lab. This is a new series of videos that will discuss uh, new uh, concepts or uh, existing IT concepts. Basically, we will talk about two major uh, changes in the IT field. Uh, one of them is the uh, 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 the beginning or the releasing of the Windows Server 2025 VNext Server Edition. So this is uh, the expected uh, <coughs> uh, expected uh, change or the expected version to be uh, used after Windows Server 2022. So we have Windows Server. Uh, v next 2025 it is released as a peer view version so it's not the final release so we will discuss in this series uh, the windows server uh, 2025 we will try to install the peer view edition and see what are the new features that are added in this uh, windows server version you will see the different features the different uh, enhancements that are uh, introduced in this new windows server version and we will discuss another IT concept or a very important concept in the IT field, which is troubleshooting. We all know that most of our time we are involved in troubleshooting different problems. We are involved in troubleshooting user problems related to applications, related to the workstation itself, okay, related to the Windows operating system, the Windows server operating system, network troubleshooting, uh, backup troubleshooting, uh, a lot of things actually so we are always involved with, I think maybe 80% or maybe half of our time we are involved in troubleshooting different issues so in this series of videos we'll discuss the different troubleshooting tools that we can use to help us troubleshoot different uh, aspects of our network as as for example applications or uh, operating systems or whatsoever okay we will discuss these two major concepts, the Windows Server 2025 and the troubleshooting concepts or tools, as we can say. All of this will be done through uh, the story of the Matrix series. We all know that in our channel, we or I prefer to discuss the different IT concepts through a story or to be to to be told through a story of a movie or or a, or a game. This will make the listener. Uh, more engaged uh, to see the videos okay because it is uh, it is told through a story and this is the best way to uh, teach or learn new concepts or teach uh, 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 teach the uh, uh, students new concepts okay through stories or through practical examples stories it will be more okay more involving because you know for example that most of us had seen the matrix series so if you see a lab that discussing it concepts through the matrix series this will be more engaging you will try to learn more because it is introduced introduced through a movie that you like okay so in this series we will discuss windows server 2025 we will try to install this operating system and see how we can uh, use it we will make it as a domain controller we will make it as a file server we will make it as a dhcp we will make it as a wsos and we will see the different changes are these roles on windows server 2025 the same as they were on the windows server 2022 so we will see how this will uh, how what are the changes okay so what are the references that i will use uh, to uh, make this lab first of all all of the troubleshooting tools and all of the troubleshooting explanations are uh, i have uh, a youtube channel for uh, a very good instructor i prefer to you all to go to his channel and subscribe he's a very talented uh, instructor uh, talking about different aspects in the it field uh, i have only uh, focused on his videos concerning the troubleshooting this channel is very very or one of the uh, good channels uh, say it's like a treasure for me okay it's called tech savvy production here we will see a lot of videos in this channel uh, talking about different concepts okay troubleshooting is one of them he is talking also about 
different aspects okay but i uh, uh, i am focusing on on his troubleshooting videos okay so we will take the these videos and try to explain it actually his explanation is very very simple i will not add more to his explanation but i will try to take what he explained and ask the ai tools which will be our uh, assistance during our journey we will use the ai tools to further explain his uh, videos okay concerning the troubleshooting problems okay so uh, can you give us uh, uh, mr kareem can you give us uh, some uh, ideas about what are the troubleshooting tools or what we will discuss concerning the troubleshooting actually i have already downloaded his videos concerning the troubleshooting and these are the videos that we will talk about or we try to explain uh, through my lab actually i'm not as i said before i'm not explain it uh, more because his explanation is simple but i try to add more to his explanation through the ai tools so for example here we will have a guide to windows lookups hangs and blue screen of this uh, okay so we'll try to troubleshoot lookup look uh, lookups of windows and hangs on windows this will be one of the troubleshooting issues we will try to discuss and what are the tools that we'll use to fix this kind of uh, problems uh, troubleshooting uh, group policies using script called gpo z a u r r this is a very uh, good tool that generate reports con concerning the group policy and we can use it to troubleshoot the group policy issues furthermore and we will discuss also the problems concerning the active directory integrated dns we will we will see how we can troubleshoot dns problems concerning the active directory and also one of the things we will discuss network troubleshooting all of these issues or all of these troubleshooting issues we will have uh, we will discuss the tools that uh, mr or, or that this channel tech savvy has discussed or had give us to troubleshoot this kind of problems for example we will uh, troubleshoot active directory health using dc diag which is a very uh, famous tool that are used that is used to uh, troubleshoot active directory problems and we will use another tool called rep uh, uh, repl, uh, repl admin this is another tool that are used or that it is used to troubleshoot replication problems between the domain controllers we will see how we can troubleshoot rep replication problems uh, uh, between domain controllers and another thing okay we will discuss how we can uh, troubleshoot latency problems okay using uh, tools or a tool called ps ping which is one of the tools that are included with a bunch of tools called sys internals or microsoft sys internals this is a very very good uh, bunch of tools or a bulk of tools that are used to troubleshoot different aspects we can troubleshoot file and disk problems networking problems process problems security problems okay and a lot of things we will see how we can use this bunch of tools to troubleshoot different aspects okay so we will troubleshoot uh, problems in the network using sys internal tools we can see for example here we have a process explorer this is another tool in the microsoft sys internals we can use to troubleshoot problems okay and we will use the task scheduler okay this is a built-in tool in the windows how we can troubleshoot uh, problems concerning the task scheduler so for example if you have a task uh, that you have created on in task scheduler in windows and there is a problem or it is not uh, implemented we, we will see how we can troubleshoot task scheduler problems we can see that he is discussing different or he's troubleshooting different aspects uh, in his domain or in his network for example we will troubleshoot applications we are not concerning uh, or windows applications we will see how we can troubleshoot windows applications how we can do that and how we can troubleshoot any application in general what are the steps we can use to troubleshoot problems okay and as we go further in the videos from this channel we can see that there is different tools like perfmon and process hacker all of these are tools that we can use to troubleshoot problems on our network psexec this is one of the tools that we can use to uh, remotely connect to uh, pcs and uh, troubleshoot problems okay and we as we go further further we can see that he is for example discussing the freezing of windows how we can resolve 
problems concerning the freezing of applications on Windows. System repair, we will discuss how we can make system repair to Windows operating systems using system repair uh, tool and DISM command. We can see that. And also, we can go further and further. He's discussing how you can troubleshoot the health of your Active Directory using PowerShell uh, or, or a script called Test Emo uh, PowerShell. A script. This is a very good script that will g give us some details about our AD health and report, a very good report. Okay. We go further and further. We can see that he is discussing a lot of things, how we can use Task Manager in the Windows to troubleshoot problems. Okay. This is one. How we can troubleshoot uh, backup problems. We can see or we all know that backup solutions use a, a service called Volume Shadow service that is used basically to backup servers and workstations. This is the sole uh, service that is responsible for backing up uh, uh, files and databases, okay, using the value, the volume shadow copy service. We will see how we can troubleshoot problems concerning this service because most of the applications for like Veeam or Backup Exec fail because this service is not working perfectly. We can see or we will see how we can uh, troubleshoot problems of backup uh, using or that the volume shadow copy is uh, used to uh, copy through it or or the backup problems are uh, using volume shadow copy for uh, the backup okay we will see how we can troubleshoot these problems and as we go, go further we will use for example windows admin center this is a very famous tool uh, in uh, windows server that we will use it we will see how we can use it to troubleshoot different problems on different servers and applications okay and as we go further, the last thing is how we can use the Windows event logging uh, logs to uh, reveal uh, more details about the problems that we are facing. So as we can see here, this is a lot of videos. Actually, I have uh, choose, chosen 20 videos from his channel. I will try to give you the summary of all of these, these 20 videos and try to uh, give more uh, details or more uh, information using the AI tools. For example, one of the videos also that he given us how to use command shell uh, commands to uh, go remotely uh, or to manage remotely Windows operating systems on clients and servers and to troubleshoot using this command shell uh, uh, tools or command shell commands. How we can use the command shell commands to remotely connect to PCs and troubleshoot different problems. So we can see these are all the videos we will try to discuss, or those are all the troubleshooting issues we will discuss in this uh, series. And as we said before, we will discuss one of, or we'll discuss the Windows Server 2025 server, as we can see here, the features and requirements and benefits. This is a, a website that is discussing the different features of the Windows Server 2025. So, uh, to begin, or what we will do, we will try to see uh, this uh, website give us some bullet points about what are the new features introduced in the uh, Windows Server 2025. If you go to the Gemini, uh, by the way, before going further to the AI tools, in this series, we will uh, use uh, four important AI tools to be our assistants during our journey. So, for example, first of all, I will use ChatGPT4, which is the which is the paid version of ChatGPT. Okay, we'll use it as one of the tools, and we will use Gemini or Google Gemini uh, tool, which is a, a free tool. Okay, this is the free version of Gemini. We will use it to help us to explain different concepts through our uh, through our uh, journey, and we will use Cloud3. AI, which is also a free tool, but it's only working in the United States and uh, Britain, okay? So it will not work in other countries as far as I know, okay? This is the free version. You have a paid version uh, called Opus, okay? This is the Cloud3 paid version. It's called Cloud3 Opus, okay? This is uh, the, the free version. It's called Cloud3 Sonnet, okay? So this is the free version of Cloud3. So we have Jet, chat GPT4, this is a paid version. Gemini, it's a free version. Cloud3 Sonnet, this is a free version, but only available in the United States and Britain. 
okay and the free tool this is another tool which is windows copilot or edge copilot this is a free version of uh, ChatGPT, okay but it is working through or integrated with the uh, microsoft edge so we will use these four tools to discuss or to ex further explain different concepts that we will work uh, on in this lab so first of all if we try to ask gemini if we go there let me sorry let me see the history here for example i asked him what are the features okay just a moment what are the features okay or the enhancements in windows server 2025 here he's saying that increased scalability support for 32 uh, page side databases here the database of the active directory uh, now it is larger okay and uh, there is enhanced replication performance for faster synchronization across geographical Spire deployments, introduction of new functional levels for forest and domains, specific details to be confirmed by Microsoft, kernel hot batching. This is one of the most important features in this series or in this uh, operating system. You can install updates on uh, the Windows Server and you not and you do not need a restart. Some of the updates uh, of Microsoft after you install it, you need to make a reboot. Okay, so this is. Uh, not needed anymore there is something called hot patching in windows server 2025 so you can install the update and you not need a restart and this is very very good for uh, decreasing the downtime or down downtime of your server okay but actually to have this feature implemented you need to be uh, subscribed to azure you need to have an azure uh, service to be uh, you have subscription in azure azure uh, services so you can apply the kernel hot batching okay as we go further we can see Streamlined network configuration with one click deployment through Azure Active Directory Network Controller. We can see here he's saying that the network configuration will be done by one click through Azure Active Directory Network Controller. Okay, I think this is also a feature related to Azure. We can see in the few years uh, or the past few years, there is an integration between uh, the on premise Windows operating system and the Azure system okay so there is an integration this is very very clear uh, in the few years before that there is an integration between azure and uh, the on-premise operating systems okay so this is one of the things okay storage optimization you you can or this this operating system uh, use the nvme storage acceleration okay or using the nv storage uh, storage hard disks so it delivers significant improvements for demanding workloads so you here is some support or this windows server 2025 support nvme storages which will increase the performance of your hard disks okay which increase the performance of the operating system in general so if you have a, a, a fast hard disk this will increase the response of the operating system okay so it supports uh, nvme storage storage replica adv advancements okay the storage replica if you have two storage and there is a replication between them this operating system introduced some uh, uh, enhancement to this storage replica okay through using deduplication and compression technology minimize storage requirements and optimize resource utilization and one of the things it's it's integrating the hyper-v with the ai artificial intelligence this is one of the things and one of the things also that you can share the gpo or your uh, graphic uh, processor okay or your graphic card it will be shared between different virtual machines so one of the enhancements of this operating system that you can share your graphic card with uh, multiple virtual machines live migration support with gpo ensures or the graphical card ensures seamless workload movement without service disruption and one of the most important things also dynamic processor compatibility simplifies server scaling by allowing mixed cpu versions within a cluster so you can use different cpu versions okay so you can have a pool of processors okay and all of this pool uh, co uh, contain different cpu versions or all of this can be used within a cluster okay so before that uh, the, the 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 cpus version should be all the same so you can use it without any problems but here this operating system support or you can use different cpu pools okay or different cpu uh, versions can be used 
uh, by the operating system okay so it is not uh, focusing on one cpu version okay improved software defined networking multi site capabilities with part 3 support for clusters anyway we can see these are the features that uh, introduced in the windows server 2025 we can see here modernized interface the one of the things that the operating system windows server 2025 appears to be the same like windows 11 the same interface the same graphical interface all of it it is completely similar to the windows 11 so it is moving to the graphical interface of windows 11 to be the same okay so these are uh, the ai we will try to ask it i need bullet points on the new features of windows server this is uh, when i ask it if we go to ask copilot we will see it will give us another problem or it will give, it, give us another answer Here we can see Windows Auto Patching. You will see this feature allows for security updates to be applied without need to reboot the server. Next generation Active Directory and SMB enhancements in these areas are expected to improve efficiency and security. We can see also give us another uh, uh, another points concerning the features. We can see here next generation Active Directory and SMB enhancement to the active directory and the smb this is a protocol related to sharing the files okay on a file server or sharing files in general it's expected to improve efficiency and security mission critical data and storage these are significant improvements in data handling and storage capabilities which the nvme uh, hard disks hyper v and ai these areas has also been considerably invested increased uh, input output Okay, on NVMe SSDs, Windows Server vNext boost IPOS by 90% on NV SSD. So, if you are using SSD hard disk or NVMe on this operating system, you will see 90% increase in the performance of this operating system. Okay, storage replica performance enhancements features a three by or three plus performance enhancements in storage replica support for stretches clustering okay i don't know what is it additional content accounts increased coverage for bluetooth devices wi-fi is present by default smb over quic alternative server port i think this is related to uh, smb some enhancements on the smb or the sharing or the protocol of sharing the files on the network okay so these are some of the features if we try to ask chat gpt on the same thing if we go to the copy and go to ChatGPT and see what will be his answer. Let's go there and go like this. We will see that it will give us also another uh, answer. We'll try to see what are these features. Windows Server hot patching, we have seen this, okay. Okay, here we can see more details. They are saying the same points as uh, age copilot. But here he is giving us more details, which is uh, uh, one of the things or one of the good things when you use different AI tools, okay, it gives us more details. Every tool give a, a tip or give an info, okay? So for example, here Windows Server hot patching, this feature allows for on-the-fly security updates without needing to reboot the server, significantly reducing downtime and enhancing service uh, continu continuity, okay? Next generation Active Directory SMB enhances to Active Directory include a new schema version and security improvements such as support for the latest security protocols and encrypted password changes. Okay, SMB enhancements focus on performance and security with SMB over QUIC available in all editions to improve speed and security over untrusted networks. So we can see here that next generation Active Directory there is uh, using the latest security protocols okay to uh, secure the active directory and the in, the encrypting passwords in the active directory mission critical uh, data and storage solution these solutions are designed to support high demand environments offering improved data management and storage capabilities hyper v and artificial intelligence integration this includes updates to microsoft virtualization platform hyper v which now better supports ai workloads and more efficient resource management okay integrating ai with the Hyper-V performance and scaling improvements with the new JetBlue engine updates. There are enhancements in performance with features like a 32K page size for new domain controllers 
supporting larger database sizes and improving access speed. You can see this database related to the Active Directory now, it is more or it is larger than before. Okay, it supports 32 page size. Okay, this is one thing. This will be supporting larger database size for the Active Directory. Uh, enhanced security measures, new security measures, including updated encryption methods for password changes and expanded use of TLS 1.3 for secure communication. We can see here, focusing on security of the Active Directory, new my support for Active Directory improvements to how Active Directory interacts with server hardware, allowing it to utilize all available CPU cores beyond the previous 64 core limit, enhancing performance on high-end servers. This is using different CPU pools, okay? So you can use different CPUs or a bunch of different versions of CPUs to, uh, in favor of your operating system. So it doesn't uh, limit you to, a or to uh, 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 one type of CPU. You can use uh, a pool of CPUs together, okay? This is NUMA support for Active Directory. You can further see or ask the AI what is the NUMA support, okay? this is a very important concept, okay? These features re represent Microsoft's commitment to delivering robust, scalable, uh, secure server solutions that meet the evolving needs of modern enterprise. So we can see these are the different features of the Windows Server 2025. If we go there and see this website, it discusses the same, or it will give you the same Things, hot patching is no longer exclusive to Azure. This is one of the things we can see here. And if we go further, if we go further, we can see Windows Server next gen Active Directory features. We have discussed the features. If we go further, we can see that it will discuss another thing here. Okay, security remains the center of the Active Directory. Okay, so this is one of the things. You can read it more. We can see here new function level paths the way in active new functional levels or forest functional levels new functional forest and domain levels okay and if we go further windows server is now optimized for new hardware like uh, nvme and ssd uh, hard hard disks okay so this is one of the things and and if we go further you can see here cluster aware application eliminating the single point of failure in ad okay this is one of the things it's failover clustering. And Hyper-V prepares for the arrival of artificial intelligence, okay, integrating artificial in intelligence with Hyper-V. And GPU assembles for high availability, or you can use one graphical card to be shared between uh, different virtual machines, or a pool of graphical cards can be shared with uh, different virtual machines, okay? So this is another thing. Dynamic processor support, okay? Uh, you see in here it's necessary to maintain uniform hardware across all machines, especially the same processor. This ensures that nodes are compatible with the same features as an instruction set, minimizing the risk of failure. However, expanding cluster nodes often meant replacing all nodes if the same hardware wasn't available. So you need, if you are having a cluster of servers, they should have the same processor or the same hardware if you are making a cluster of hardware. Okay, here it's saying that there's no need for this because with the introduction or introduction of dynamic processor compatibility, the operating system maintains node compatibility. For instance, if node features different generations of Intel Xeon processors, such as third and fourth generation, Windows Server will conceal the improvements introducing the newer processor from the cluster to ensure compatibility. This feature streamlines cluster management and allows for greater flexibility. So here, we can use different processors, okay, or different pool of processors, okay? Generation 2 machines take the lead, becoming the new standard. This is related to the Hyper-V uh, uh, virtual machines. Containers are still, or the Windows containers are still used. As we can see further, we can go and see the different things. Measure against brute force attacks. This is the security or SMB protocols. Okay, it's more secure now. And if we go further, the last one, the transition to Windows Server 25 will be streamlined through Windows Update. So this is one of the things. Transition to Azure Arc. This is integrating Azure uh, with on-premise servers using the Azure Arc. So you can uh, integrate your Azure uh, domain or Azure network with your on-premise network using the Azure Arc. Okay, a new as pay as you go license. Okay, this is one also of the things. 
Windows 7 will support for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This is one of the things, support for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology, which may seem unconventional for a server operating system. While Windows Server already allowed computers to connect to Wi-Fi networks, the process was cumbersome due to disabled components. In this, this, this version, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth components are enabled by default. However, they remain turned off initially, but can be easily activated by a single click from the setting apps, mirroring the functionality in the Windows 11. This enhancement simplifies enabling and managing wireless connections, improving user experience and convenience for server administrators. So we can see there is support for Wi-Fi on the server. I don't know why they did that, because there is no server that contains Wi-Fi, by the way, or it is not secure. And Bluetooth. So we can see these are the different versions or the sorry, different features concerning this operating system. So in this lab, we will install Windows Server 2025. We will see the different features. We will discuss the different features. We will discuss the different troubleshooting features, okay, or the trouble troubleshooting issues, okay, as we have discussed before. We will use the four AI tools that we have mentioned. And which tool I recommend uh, from these AI tools to be used in order? The first one I recommend is Chat GPT-4. This is the most accurate one, and this is a paid one. And then the next AI tool it is a Microsoft Edge or so or Edge Copilot, okay, Edge Copilot. And then you can use Cloud and at the end Cloud three and at the end Gemini, okay, Gemini and Cloud. Sometimes they give uh, inaccurate results. Okay, there is some uh, percentage of in uh, inaccuracy which appears to be more in Gemini. I see uh, a lot of incorrect answers in Gemini. As for Claude, uh, it is less. Okay, in ChatGPT4, it is much much less. In uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Edge Copilot, it is more, less less and less. Okay. For scripting, you can see that GPT-4 will offer you uh, uh, more scripting or or accurate scripting scripts, okay? Or it, it give you more, uh, or give you scripts, uh, correct scripts. Gemini can give you, uh, or mostly in it, it is in the scripting field, it's not correct. It give you uh, wrong scripts. As for uh, Copilot here or Edge Copilot gives you also correct scripts. And for Cloud, it gives you also correct scripts, okay? So, uh, I prefer ChatGPT4, then uh, Microsoft Copilot, then Cloud, then Gemini, okay? So, this is uh, my order or preferred order in the AI tools. So, let's begin our journey and see how we can install the Windows operating system or Windows Server 2025 operating system. Okay, this is the video. First of all, to get this version of Windows, you need to go to Windows Insider uh, website and uh, subscribe to it using your Outlook or Microsoft uh, email account. And after subscribing to the Windows Insider, you can download the Windows Server 2025 Preview Edition. This is one of the things or how you can download this version of Windows. Let's see how much time we have. We have 33 minutes. Okay. So we can go now and begin to see how our lab will work. Now, first of all, we can see here that this is a website. Okay, it's called Windows Change or changewindows.org. This a website that gives you the different uh, Windows operating systems lifetime cycle or the, wind the Windows, uh, different Windows operating system life cycle. As we see here, for example, this is Windows Server 2025. You will see it was uh, uh, introduced in 23 September 2021, and uh, the latest version is uh, 2604, uh, 2604.1000. It was introduced in 26 January uh, 2024. Okay, this, so this is the release that was uh, uh, introduced in the website okay, of Microsoft Insider during the recording of the video. We can see, and these are the different version or the development. It was developed in 23 September, and there was different version and builds until they have reached this current version. Through this website, you can see the different changes. So you can see what are the new features introduced in every uh, build. So for example, uh, the build of uh, 26040, 
points 1000 have different features than for example 26.010.1000 you can see the changes from this version to this version from this website so this is a very good website you can use it to see the different operating system changes okay for example windows 10 changes on the operating system so this is a very good website you can use to give you a, 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 a glance about what are the changes so we can see here these are the different versions okay uh, for the windows server 2025 and there is a code name for it it's called it's called selenium okay uh, actually i see it's named v next maybe it was changed or it was given a name and it was changed later we can see these are, are the different versions of the operating system of windows server 2025 Okay, we can see these are the different versions. If you ask the AI tool to summarize this page, if you go to Microsoft uh, or Edge Copilot, tell him to summarize this page, it will give you a glance about uh, this page. Okay, so you can ask the AI tool to summarize the page. We will see uh, what it will give us. Okay, so this is one of the uh, tools or one of the things that the AI uh, enhance in it or it or, or or you can use the ai tool to to give you an answer for example he's giving this page the timeline of windows server not windows 10 release from the change windows website it shows you the version number code name the name of the uh, operating system release date and build number of each release as well as the status of the release ongoing it's still in progress or preview it's a beta version or it's not the final release or development it's under development it is not uh, it's not released yet okay so here we can see that he's giving us a glance and then he give us some info he's saying that the latest release it was uh, called windows uh, server 2025 this is not windows 10 windows server 2025 version 24h2 code name selenium was released on January 26, 2024, with the build number so and so. The next release, okay, it is Windows Server uh, 2025 uh, 25H1. Okay, it's named called uh, Tantalium. Okay, which is currently under development and has the latest build number 22463.1000. He's giving us some uh, summary. Okay, as you can see here. The longest release in Windows, okay, the lo the, lo the longest Windows release, or the le the the one that has been used uh, for a long time and it was ended, Windows Server 2025 version 23H2. It was codenamed Plutonium. It had lasted for 15 months and then it was ended. Okay, it was working from October 2021, uh, 2021 to January 26, 2024. So they have been using this version for 15 months until they have released the 24H2, okay? This is one of the things. The shortest release in Windows, okay, it is Windows Server 2025 22H2, code name Cobalt, okay? It was only released for two months until they have uh, uh, shifted to the 23H2 version. So we can see here, this is a little bit of a brief about what this uh, page contains. So you can ask the AI to summarize the page it's a very good info we have got from this uh, from this website okay this is very very simple we can ask uh, you can click on any page or you can go to any page and then ask the copilot to summarize this page okay so this is basically one of the th simple uh, ways to summarize any content on, on any page on the internet okay <laughs> so we can go further uh, if you ask gemini it's a little bit different you need to copy the url of the website and ask gemini to summarize uh, the page and it is not as accurate as uh, uh, age copilot okay and we can see uh, here the, the this is the uh, the shortest version which is copilot okay or which is cobalt this is one of the uh, shortest release okay so now we can go and tell him okay for example maybe i need to arrange this data in a table so you can ask the ai to summarize and arrange uh, this info in a table we will see it arranged in a different layout so we can uh, 
uh, understand it more we will see he is here arranging in a table okay so let's see how he can arrange the data so we are uh, exploring the windows server 2025 operating system we are seeing the history of this operating system when it was introduced what are the different versions of it what are the expected or the future versions of it okay so if we try to uh, see what this table contains we can see here okay let's see if you go there and try to stretch uh, just stretch uh, stretch it a little bit more we will see here that this table contains very useful info you can see here that this is the operating system but here is not windows 10 it is windows server 2025 okay it's code name selenium it was released in january 26 2024 the build and it was released okay but here it should say that it is a preview version anyway and the future version is 25 h1 it's called uh, tantalium and it's under development and the longest uh, or the longest version of or that was uh, uh, used for 15 months it is ended now it is called windows server 2025 23h2 it was introduced in 21 uh, 2021 and ended january 26 2024 and the shortest one it was introduced in august and it ended in october ended two months as we can see here that the table gives us or arranged the data in uh, in a readable format okay so we can see as you see it's much much better and we can understand from it not like it's in text okay now it is arranged in a table so we can see the ai tool can uh, give you uh, different answers with different formats okay so this is one of the things uh, that encourage me to use the AI tools okay so we can ask uh, Gemini to uh, give us the same or try to summarize this page using Gemini but actually the answer was not that uh, accurate or it was not uh, as uh, promising as this uh, as the answer of uh, age copilot so I'm copying uh, the URL of the page and go to Gemini and ask it to uh, to uh, uh, explain or to summarize the page it's called google bard when i was uh, when i was uh, uh, recording the video but now it is called gemini okay summarize this page and then shift uh, shift and enter to take a space and then put the url okay so you can see now paste as plain text and then we will see that he give us a very very brief summary about the page so we can see here this is the article okay about the development timeline for windows server 2025 it discussed the different stages of the development from the initial announcement in september 2021 this is correct to the current preview build okay so this is a preview build the article also includes information about the features and functionality that are planned for the Windows Server 25. Some of the important points from the article are the next preview build is expected to be released not in, in January 2024. This is not correct. It was to be released in uh, in in 20. I think it's not January. It is indifferent. If we go further, if we go a little bit further, we will see that the answer of uh, let me go and give you a little bit here. If we go further, we can see that there is no uh, this is the uh, the the latest version or it is under development so he is not giving a correct answer he should say that the feature version or the future version it is 25h1 not this build or not uh, the 24h2 if we go further and see what was the answer we will see he's telling us that the expected release to be in january it's not in january and there is no uh, release time for the future version <clears throat> the final release of windows 25 is expected to be in the second half of 2024 i think this is not also correct answer maybe he he got this from the internet but it was not uh, given in the website okay so he's giving us mixed answer 
<clears throat> and not a, a fully uh, correct answer. So this is one of the major uh, disadvantages of, of Gemini. It sometimes give wrong data, okay? So if I try to, to tell him to arrange the data in the website in a table, so you can see his answer is not completely correct, okay? This is one of the things I take on Gemini. It's not as accurate as ChatGPT4 <clears throat> or even uh, Edge, okay, or Edge Copilot. <clears throat> Arrange data in table and again we will see that he, his arrangement of the data uh, in a table it is different than Microsoft Edge uh, Copilot, okay. We will see that he's saying that uh, 23 H2 is under development, okay, which is not correct. It is ended, okay, 23 H2. 24 H2, it is a preview build. This is correct. It is not under development. It is already released, okay? And we can see the data is not correct. He is giving us wrong data. <coughs> this is not a correct uh, data, okay? He's trying to, or he, he has arranged the data in incorrect order, okay? So you will see he's manipulating or is giving the data in different. We can see here that they are all not correct. Okay, we can see that the data is not correct at all. Okay, he is not giving the data in a correct order. Okay, so we can see this is one of the disadvantages of a Gemini. Of Gemini okay, uh, 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 Age Copilot is is better in this uh, feature summarizing pages. Okay. <clears throat> and it's also integrated with the browser, so it is uh, it is more uh, more accurate. Okay, so now we can. Uh, I have already told you guys about the features or the website that contain the features. Okay, this is the features as we see here. This is our the uh, the website, and then what I told him. This is the website. If we go further. And tell him this is the page that I was uh, telling you about and tell him to generate as we can see here if you go further this is the website and then I tell him to generate a page summary okay to give us the benefits of or to summarize what this page contains okay and then he will give us what we were discussing about uh, we have discussed this before okay Windows Server and hot patching and uh, Active Directory enhancements storage and GPU, we have discussed all of this, cluster and Hyper-V AI, uh, containers and SMB, subscription and wireless, we have discussed this before, okay, so this is the summarization of this page, if we go to Gemini again and ask him to uh, uh, to summarize the page, he will give us, telling us that I cannot summarize the page, so we still have some problems concerning summarizing different website pages through Gemini. Uh, uh, Microsoft Edge Copilot uh, excel in this uh, in this part, uh, especially or specifically. <laughs> okay, so we can see here that our different features. Okay, we can see it giving us a summarization about. Uh, we have discussed every point of it. Okay, so we can see. And one of the things I like about uh, Edge Copilot give us gives you the links from what are the data or what are the sources he got his uh, uh, information from okay so this is uh, to ensure that the data is correct you you need to make sure to like the uh, the answer because this will help the developers to uh, develop the ai tool as long as you uh, put like to the answer this confirms that the data is correct and the ai is working perfectly okay this will help to uh, enhance or to uh, develop the AI tool more and more, okay? So be sure to give your feedback about uh, the AI answer. Here, I'm sorry, I'm not able to access the website. The most common reason that the content may be available to me are paywalls, login requirements. This is not correct. We don't have any login or anything, and it's available. It's uh, available free website or sensitive data. This is not a sensitive data. So this is one of the major down backs or the, or the drop downs of uh, the uh, this AI tool, okay. So now we can begin our lab. Now we can <clears throat> what we can do. I can show you uh, <clears throat> uh, answer. Okay, here the Claude. If I try to ask Claude AI 
Uh, this was uh, a surprise for me. If, uh, when I asked Claude AI about the Windows Server 2025, he said that I don't recognize this operating system because my uh, current uh, knowledge information database is uh, is stuck or it is only updated until August 2023. So if you try to ask uh, Claude, if you go there and ask Claude AI, for example, here, if you go to ask it Claude AI and ask it about the features of this operating system, we will see that one of the drops or one of the disadvantages that he's saying that I have only my knowledge base currently on August 2023, though it is not updated or its database is not updated. So we can see that we should be aware that it's not uh, currently connected to the internet or it is like ChatGPT, the old ChatGPT, it is only updated until August 2023. Okay, so this is one of the things we need to focus on. Okay, so now we can go and tell uh, one of the also drawbacks of uh, Claude that it cannot summarize the page. Okay, unfortunately, I'm unable to directly summarize the page. I don't have access to web pages, so this is also another uh, problem. We can see that the only one that summarizes the pages effectively it's uh, it is a Microsoft Edge Copilot and ChatGPT4. You can use both in summarizing pages uh, more efficiently. So we can go further. And uh, by the way, I have summarized so we can see this page that contains the features of Windows Server 2025. I have already a power uh, a PowerPoint presentation that contains some screenshots okay about the different features in this operating system i will leave it in a google drive link in my in the description of the video so you can uh, take a more further look on it okay so this is are the features as we can see here now we can begin our lab first of all we need to go and uh, install or we will use our uh, hypervisor which will be the vm workstation pro 17.5 this is the, uh, the virtualization uh, platform that we will use and as for the operating system i have already downloaded from the windows uh, insider uh, website okay you can see these are the serials you should use it to uh, activate the uh, uh, Windows uh, 2025 uh, operating system version. I will leave it also in a Google Drive link that, or in a text file that contains the serial for this operating system. Here is the Windows Insider Purview Server vNext. Okay, this is the ISO. How you can download it? You need to go to the website, uh, subscribe, or uh, uh, su subscribe to the Windows Insider Purview program using your uh, uh, Microsoft uh, email account. And then you can, after that, download uh, the operating system. So you will see Windows Insider. Here, here it is. You can go to the Windows Insider. And then you should uh, sign in. Okay, using your oh, here you can you should sign in to the to the uh, website. You sign in using your Microsoft account. Outlook account. Okay, you can see here that here I am uh, using. I have an already an uh, Microsoft Outlook account. So I put my password, Karim Dutrov at Outlook.com. This is my account. It's free. You can make a Microsoft account for free. Now I am inside the Windows Insider Edition or the Windows Insider website. Now I can go and tell him to download uh, the uh, uh, the Windows 2025 operating system. Okay, so. This is very, very simple. Now I can go and tell him we download Windows Server, okay? And here we will have the page, okay? We can now download, okay? Here you can see that we can download different things. We can download Windows Server Insider Purview. This is the one, okay, vNext, okay? This is the one that we will use, confirm, and then we download it. And now we can make a new virtual machine and install the operating system on it. So now tell him, first of all, what are our virtual network uh, preferences? We can see here that I will have 
my virtual network VMNet 8, okay? And this virtual network, we will have all of our domain controllers connected to it, and the IP range is 192.168.79.0, okay? So this is the uh, virtual network uh, preferences. Okay, we can see here that it is NAT, or it is working with NAT. We can see this is the IP gateway, or gateway IP. We should uh, remember it to use it later as our internet gateway. And as for the DNS setting, we will use Google as our preferred DNS uh, setting. Okay, this is for the NAT, okay. Okay, now we can create a virtual machine and begin installing the operating system. Okay, so now, <laughs> We need to go and install the operating system. What we will do now, I think, uh, we should first create, or I will put my virtual machine in a folder. In here, I need to create a folder for my new virtual machine. Okay, this uh, folder will contain the files of the virtual machine. Okay, so my virtual machine will call DC SM0125. So DC, it is an abbreviation of domain controller. SM, this is our network or domain network, 01, this is the first server, 2025, it is an abbreviation for the version of the operating system, which is 2025, okay, so now we have this uh, virtual machine folder created, now we can create a virtual machine, typical, and then install operating system later, here we will not see uh, an option for Windows Server 2025, so we can use Windows Server 2022, okay, instead, okay, it will work. Before that, I, uh, I have already uh, tried to see if there is any software updates for the uh, VM Workstation Pro. Maybe it will include the Windows Server 2025, but it is still in the preview version or and it is in the preview uh, mode, okay, so, or a preview uh, release. So I think it will not be included in the VM Workstation Pro. When it is finally released, I think it will be included in the VM Workstation Pro uh, selection options, okay? So there is no updates. Okay, so now we can close and create a virtual machine. Next, next, 2022, next. Now we can go to the folder that we have created earlier to put the virtual machine in it. Okay, it is in my documents. Okay, then documents, then VM then the folder of the virtual machine. Okay, now we can name it, the virtual machine as DCSM0, okay. <laughs> Control V, next. We can give it a, a hard disk of 300 gigabyte. We will add two hard disks actually, one for the operating system and the other for the data. 300 gigabytes, which is the recommended for any server operating system. Okay, and now we can add an additional hard disk. We tell him finish, and we can edit the virtual machine setting. We need to add an additional hard disk, and uh, we need to add two network cards to this server because we'll make network teaming between them. So first of all, I need to give it one processor because I don't have a lot of processors, and then I, I will add uh, Okay, another hard disk, okay, which will be 200 gigabyte. This will be for the data, and we should put our network card or connect our network card to the virtual network VMNet8, okay, which will be our domain network. So now I can go and add the additional hard disk to the folder that contains the virtual machine. So VM, make sure to uh, select the correct folder because it will not put the additional hard disk. Uh, unless you uh, point it to the uh, correct folder. Now we can tell him to go to VMNet8, the network, okay? And then we should add another one, by the way, and connect it to VMNet8. As I said before, I will have uh, some network teaming between the two network cards. Now we go and uh, mount or insert the Windows operating system uh, ISO image, okay? And then begin the process of the installation. First of all, we need to make sure that the framework Okay, of this virtual machine will be UEFI, and we have the option of secure boot uh, selected. 
First of all, we can make the snapshot option to ask me if I need a snapshot of the virtual machine. Shared folders, I need to share a folder between my laptop and this virtual machine. This contains all my scripts and uh, programs, so I can uh, access them easily, okay? So this is the folder shared between the virtual machine or between the guest and the host. Okay, so now we can go and add the folder. This is uh, matrix lab final. This contains all of my scripts. It will be shared and it will be mapped as a network drive in the Windows guest operating system. We go to advanced, we need to make sure that the, the operating or framework, it will be UFI and to enable secure boot. Okay, so now we can begin the installation. The first thing I have uh, noticed that there is a hang during the installation of the operating system. You will see a lot of hangs or a freezing of the virtual machine. What you should do, you should restart the virtual machine or power off the virtual machine and open it back. So don't worry. This happens because this is still a, a preview uh, 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 edition. Okay, so you expect to have some uh, problems with this version. Okay, so now we will see one of the things also to be noticed the different graphical interface of or the different setup graphical interface of the Windows Server. We will see different uh, graphical interface. If you wait for a second, okay, we will see that this is different or this is not the normal uh, interface we, we we normally see when we are uh, installing a Windows Server. So this is a new setup, okay, new setup uh, GUI or graphical interface. We will see it asks us to language to install the time and currency and then the keyboard. Okay, and then we have three options, install, repair and launch the legacy experience. If you don't like this setup GUI, you can return back to the normal graphical setup interface okay so if we can go further like this and let's go further here if we go further again and tell him to launch the legacy experience here first you need to agree the license agreement launch this one and tell him next we will see that it will be a different graphical interface so this was the normal one that we currently are or we we are normally accommodated to this kind of interface so if I try to restart and then begin the installation okay so the first thing the setup uh, uh, GUI is different We will continue working and we actually will stop. I will only install the operating system and install the VMware tools and stop at that point and continue uh, in the upcoming video. So not to make this video a little bit long. So now we are telling him to install the operating system. We have a product key, but we will not insert it now. And then we are giving the hard disk so far we need to install windows server data center disk desktop experience for the gui or graphical interface the other ones are the core or, or the non windows graphical interface which is called core okay windows core accept and then accept license agreement and then we will have the hard disks uh, displayed and we will choose one hard disk to install the operating system on and then we should uh, go further in the installation okay so now we are having the first hard disk which is the 300 k gigabyte tell him next and then we can see it will begin the installation different setup uh, interface okay it's installing and tell him to install and then it will take some time you should have your hard disk uh, SSD by the way so you you can see a small a smooth installation okay so it will take some time I am pausing the video a couple of times until the installation is finished as I said before you will see there is some hangs okay you will we will we will see that it will hang a couple of times but this is normally okay because as I said before this is a preview edition so it will take some time
So what we can do now, we can see the normal setup. Okay, it will install the operating system and we'll make a couple of restarts. We will see at the end uh, that the interface of the Windows will be much, much similar to the Windows 11 uh, interface, okay? And by the way, it's not uh, as fast as uh, the Windows Server 2022 uh, operating system. It's, it takes a lot of hardware. For example, I have this virtual machine 2 gigabyte, but it's slow. You need to give it more uh, RAM, at least to have 4 gigabyte of uh, RAMs, which is the same requirement of Windows 11. We can see that they are both this, both operating systems have the same hardware requirement, which is much more than uh, Windows 10 and Windows Server uh, 2022. We can see here that uh, the hard disk led it's not working we can see it is hanging now completely you need to make sure that the hard disk led is working if it's not working you need to restart the virtual machine go there and restart the virtual machine or to power off the virtual machine so if we go further okay let me go further more and first of all I'm trying to make control alt delete still it's not working so the last resort is to restart the virtual machine okay you need to restart the virtual machine or to power off and power on the virtual machine again. So if you go there, you need to go there and restart the virtual machine, okay? Still, I don't have any respond. So we need to go and restart the virtual machine, okay? Restart, guest, or power off and power on if the restart didn't work, okay? So now we will see the operating system continues the installation. You can see the hard disk LED, it is working. And now the installation continues. We have 94%. And we there is a couple of restarts here. I'm just uh, monitoring the RAM and the CPU usage to make sure that there is no hanging of the virtual machine or we, we, we don't see any performance issues concerning this virtual machine okay so we can go and continue the installation okay I think we can go further anyway so what happens here here you are be, uh, will be asked to uh, put the product key but we will not put it now and then you will be asked to uh, accept the license agreement and then to put the password for the local administrator of this virtual or this server you need to put up a, com a complex password okay at least eight characters or some recommendation to be 15 characters okay and to disable this account okay later okay so next, and then we'll be asked a couple of questions cons concerning the diagnostic data sent to Microsoft. We need to make sure uh, that uh, we don't give a lot of diagnostic data to be sent to Microsoft. We can see here that the interface is much, much similar to Windows 11. So we will go and log in with the password. I need to make sure to install the VM tools, VMware tools, so we can access the shared folders between my host and my guest. If these tools are not installed, we will not be able to communicate or there is, there will be no communication between my guest and my host. Okay, so we need to log in now and then we'll be asked the first question to decide what diagnostic data to be sent to Microsoft website. Okay, some organizations uh, make it a little bit limited for security measures or for security issues okay if we go further we will see uh, that you only need to choose uh, required data to be sent not optional data okay so diagnostic data are two parts uh, additional diagnostic data and required diagnostic data you need only to choose the required diagnostic data okay 
So sending diagnostic data to Microsoft, we need only to choose the required for security issues, okay? Or if your company focuses on security, okay? So you need to tell them to all required only, okay? Okay, as we see here, it gives you an option sending only info about your device, its setting and capabilities, and whether it's performing properly. Diagnostic data is used to help Microsoft keep Windows secure and up-to-date, troubleshooting problems, and make products improvement. Regardless of your choice, your device will be equally secure and will operate normally. So it is giving some data about the operating system, the performance of the operating system, okay, to make the Windows more secure and up-to-date. Okay, so we will choose only the required only. Okay, and tell him accept. <clears throat> This is a, a similar to privacy setting, okay, in uh, Windows 11, okay? Your location, your diagnostic data, your telemetry data, okay, all the same. And then we can pause, okay? Here we can see this is the server manager. We need to make sure it will not pop up automatically. We need to tell him not to open the server manager uh, uh, after login, okay? So this takes from the RAM, I tell him only to I will launch it when I need do not start server manager automatically at login okay so tell him okay and as we can see that the interface even the background it is similar to Windows 11 it's actually the background of Windows 11 so now we are inserting the uh, VMware tools or install VMware tools to install the necessary device drivers so we can communicate or work with virtual this with this virtual machine properly. Okay, we can see the same as Windows 11, the same interface, the same graphical interface. So now we will install the VMware tools and we'll stop at that point. But first of all, we need to install the VMware tools and make a restart. And the upcoming video we will continue. We need to uh, make network teaming between the two network cards we have and then put an IP address static IP address for this server and then we can promote it to be a domain controller or install Active Directory tools or module and then promote this server to be the, our primary domain controller okay so we need to install that tell him next okay and tell him complete and next and we are prompted for a restart after installing the VMware tools. So you can see installing VMCI driver, installing a, a graphical card uh, drivers, uh, USB mouse driver. So installing video driver, and then the screen the screen will flicker because this is installing the video driver. Okay, so now we can see that the screen is expanding and we can see it in a different uh, different resolution, optimized resolution. And now we can tell him finish and make a restart. So we will stop at this minute, 34, 36, we will restart and then the upcoming video will continue working with this operating system. Hope this video is informed of you all, so until we meet the uh, next time uh, thank you so much and have a nice day